All right, this video is going to show you how to make uh, two drop-down lists that are dependent on one drop-down list. Uh, here's a quick sample of what it might look like. The first drop-down list has two items, item A and item B, and then there are two other drop-down lists that change dependent on what's in the first list. Um, and they change to different things. That's the part that makes it a little bit tricky is to change them to different lists based on what's in the first list. So we're going to use a combination of indirect and VLOOKUP to do this. You could use if statements, but if your first list is more than two or three items long, if statements are just going to get way too long. So uh, we'll get that out of here, and we will start looking at how to actually make that. Now I'm going to blow everything up a little bit uh, just to make it easier to see. Uh, so now we have significantly larger cells so that everything is a little bit easier to see. We'll, we'll create some headers here. We'll change this to a little bit larger font and center everything. Create some borders real quick. This is all just to make everything a little bit easier to see. And I like to get rid of the grid lines so that I can see what I'm working with a little bit more clearly. Okay, now once this is done, I'm going to create a second sheet, and this is just going to be for data storage. So the first part of this sheet is going to be a series of lists. We're going to give each list a name, and that way we can use that list in our validation statements, which you'll see in a minute. So the first list is going to be item A and item B. We'll highlight both of those. Click on Insert, then down at Name, choose Define, and we'll call that Main. Our next list is going to be upper part 1, and upper part 2, and we're going to name this list upper A, with no spaces. Now you can really name the lists whatever you want, as long as you remember what the names are and which list they go to. Uh, if you forget, you can always double check by looking in your defined name lists. Uh, so we'll continue on. Uh, next we want upper part K and upper part J. And this list we're going to call upper B. Now we'll do our lower parts. Lower part 1 and lower part 2. And to keep the na same naming system here, we'll call this lower A. Now we'll create another final list with lower part P and lower part Q. And this list we will call lower B. Now we're going to create a grid that we can use for a VLOOKUP. In the farthest left column of our grid, we're going to put item A and item B. Now any list that we want to display when item A is selected needs to go in the item A row. So upper A and lower A should both be in item A's row. Now we made these names with no spaces or anything like that, so make sure the names are written as exactly as you have defined them. And again, for item B, any list that should be associated with item B should be in item B's row. Upper B and lower B. Now we'll highlight the whole thing and we'll give it a name lists and hit enter. Now back at sheet one, data validation for our first list. 
it's going to be item A and item B. So we'll click on data, choose validation, then we'll choose list, put equals, and then type in main because that's the name of our main list. Um, you always use the equal sign if you want Excel to reference a list because the equal sign tells it it has to do something with that information. If you don't use the equal sign, it will simply add the word main to your list. So we check it out. Item A and item B both show up nicely. So now we're going to use data validation and VLOOKUP using that grid that we created to reference the name of whatever list should be associated with item A. So let's go to data validation and figure out how to do this. Change it to list. Source, always use equals. We're going to use a function called indirect. Indirect is almost like a double equal sign. The first equal sign tells Excel it has to do something with the information we put there. Once we put the VLOOKUP in, it'll process that formula, and it'll be left with a list name, which will be upper A or upper B. If we don't use the indirect function, then all we're going to have in the upper parts drop-down list is the word upper B or upper A. Uh, when we use the indirect function, it tells Excel, okay, once you've finished processing this information, now you need to process the result of that information to find out if there's something else associated with it. So you'll, you'll see how that works in a minute. So we use indirect, open parentheses. Now we'll use VLOOKUP, open parentheses again. And we're going to look up whatever is here in C4. Since we named that other grid lists, we can just type lists. That's the range we're looking for, comma again. The second row is where all of our upper parts are. So we'll use number two, then comma one more time. Uh, and we'll put false. False tells Excel that we're looking for an exact match. If you have an array of numbers uh, and you can use anything in between, you know, say you have 5, 10, 15, and 20, and if it's between 5 and 10, then you want it to show one result, that's when you use true. Um, but right now we want an exact match, so we're going to use false. So we'll close that parentheses, we'll close the next parentheses, and we should be good to go here. So we have upper part one and upper part two. We choose item B. We've got upper part K and upper J. All right, now we'll do the same thing for lower parts. Data validation, list equals indirect. VLOOKUP. Again, we're going to use C4. We're going to use our lists grid that we created again. This time we're going to be looking in column 3. Column 3 is where we stored all of our lower part information. And again, it's going to be false. Close both parentheses. And we've got lower part P and lower part Q. Still upper parts K and J. Upper parts are still correct and our lower parts are correct. So that is how you can create a one to two relationship with data validation using the indirect function. Uh, if you've got any questions, go ahead and leave me a comment or shoot me a message. I'll try to answer as best as I can.